Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be looking at a fun problem involving ducks in a pond. I remember this was said to me back in high school, and I just remembered it, and I thought it was quite a little fun problem, so I thought I'd share it with you. <clears throat> so, we have a circular pond, and we place three ducks randomly, i.e. uniformly, inside the pond. What is the probability that each of the ducks lie in the same half, i.e. we can construct a semicircle such that each duck lies within the semicircle? So, for example, we have our circular pond here, and these small circles of the ducks. So in this case, we have duck one, duck two, duck three, all within the same half, because we can draw a diameter, this line here, such that they're all within the same half. However, if we look at this example over here, we've got three ducks. However, no matter where we try and draw a diameter, it will have at least one duck in either, on either side of the diameter. So for example, if I try and draw this diameter here, we've got one duck there, and those two ducks on that half, so that's no good. If I try one, say, here, it won't work, or here, or here. No matter where you draw a diameter, unfortunately, you'll always have one duck on either side. So we want to know what's the probability that the three ducks lie on the same side. So um, one modelling assumption is that the ducks, I've drawn them as circles here, but in, in the mathematical problem, they're just points, so they have no area, and yeah, they're, they're distributed uniformly uniformly. Uh, along the circle. So if you want to have a go at this problem, please pause the video now and have a go, and I'll go over a solution in just a second. Okay, so the first thing to notice is, this, that, is that this problem is actually quite tricky on the face of it. If you try and solve it directly, it, it, it seems like there's too many different variables and too many different things going on that we have to consider, but there's a lot of things we can do to make this problem a lot simpler. So let me just draw a circular pond for a second. Okay, now, suppose we have a duck here, now, or, or, I don't know, these three ducks here. So, in this case, we can draw them in the same half, we can draw a diameter here. But notice that if we bring these ducks up to the edge of the pond, so we consider the line going through the centre and the duck, each of the ducks, and we just continue that line to the circumference, to the edge of the pond, it doesn't actually change the fact that they're all within the same half, okay? So we may assume without loss of generality that each of the ducks are placed on the circumference because uh, if we just bring each duck out to the circumference, that's not going to change the fact that they're in the same half. It doesn't change the problem. So we made our problem a little bit simpler. We, we've assuming that each of the ducks goes onto the edge of the pond. So now we're only considering putting the ducks on the circumference, and then what's the probability they lie in the, it, They all lie within the same half. Okay, so let's suppose we put our first duck on the pond. Now, we may assume, without loss of generality, it's put right at the North Pole, at the top there, because say if it's put, I know, here, for example, we can just look at the pond from this angle, or just rotate the pond so that the duck is at the top, because again, that's not going to change um, which half that duck which half of the pond that duck lies in. Okay, so that's something which is quite neat. So then we've placed our first duck and we've, we're assuming that it's going at the top here, again, because otherwise we can just rotate the pond so that it's here. Now we have our second duck. Now our second duck, if I think of the diameter here, the second duck is either going to be on this side, on this side of the circumference, this semicircle here, or it's going to be on this one here. Now again, for a similar reason why we can put the first duck at the top. Without loss of generality, we may assume that the second duck goes on this right-hand side here, because if it is on this left-hand side, we can just flip the pond, or look at it from behind, say, or if it's a pond from underneath. Uh, and again, that's not going to change uh, whether or not the ducks are all on the same half. So the duck on this side here, we're now going to bring onto this side here, again, without, without loss of generality. So our second duck is somewhere on this circumference here. Now, I'm going to denote where it is with an angle, so if that's our centre, then our second duck is going there, we'll call that angle there theta. Okay, so what do we know about theta? Theta is a random variable, and it varies uniformly between 0 and pi. Okay, so it can take any value between 0 and pi, uh, so 0 being there and pi being there, and it, take, it can take each of those values with equal probability. Now. We want to consider where can we place our third duck so that all three ducks lie in the same half. Well, if I can think, think of this line here and just extend it, 
if I place the duck just there, well, they're all in the same half, i.e. with this diameter. Similarly, if I place the duck here, they're all in the same, it, the third duck there, they're all within the same diameter, same half by this diameter here. So I can place the duck anywhere between here and here, and this line here works as a diameter to put all three ducks within the same half. But also, I can place the third duck here, or here, because again, this line will also work. In fact, the duck can be anywhere above this line here, and all three ducks will be in the same diameter, in the same half, sorry. But also, I can place the duck anywhere here as well. The third duck here, 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 or anywhere up to this line here, because then this line here acts as a diameter, putting all three ducks in the same half. So let me just rub off all these extra ducks, ducks I've put on. So, the third duck can be anywhere between here, all the way around to this point here. Well, what is that as an angle? Well, from simple geometry, that's a straight line, and that angle there is theta. So that makes this one here pi minus theta. And this is a straight line, so the angle there is pi. So the total angle here oh, is pi minus, uh, 2 pi minus theta. Okay, so we're placing our duck anywhere on the circum the third duck anywhere on the circumference and any sort of good position it can be in has probability 2 pi minus theta over 2 pi i.e. the total circumference so 2 pi minus theta over 2 pi and that's that's uh, the probability the, what we're looking for the probability let's call it p so p equals 2 pi minus theta divided by 2 pi and that can be simplified to be written as 1 minus theta over 2 pi. But we still haven't answered the problem yet because theta is a random variable. We don't want the answer to be in terms of a random variable. So we want to know the expected value of this thing here. Because remember the second duck, we don't know where it's going to be. We know it's going to be somewhere on this right hand side, but we don't know where it's going to be. So we take the expected value. So the expected value of theta is going to be the expected value of this uniform, uh, this random variable, which, which is uniformly distributed between naught and pi, and that's going to be the midpoint, namely pi over two. So if you think about it, if you've got the the, uh, the real line here, this is zero, this is pi, and you're taking numbers randomly, uniformly within, on average, the number you're going to get is the number in the middle, namely pi over two. So the expected value of theta is pi over two. Okay, so now we want to know the expected value of P. Well, the expected value of P, we can use some linearity tricks that we know. That's just going to be 1 minus the expected value of theta divided by 2 pi. But the expected value of theta we just said was pi over 2. So this thing here becomes 1 minus pi over 2 all divided by 2 pi. Well, this thing here, the pi and the pi cancel, and we're left with a half divided by 2. Well, a half divided by 2 is a quarter, so we've got 1 minus a quarter, and that is 3 quarters. And that's our solution. So if we take 3 ducks randomly inside a pond, they have probability 3 quarters of being within the same half. So just to review what we've done, we've firstly shown that the, we can assume that each of the ducks can go on the circumference, and that's because uh, we don't actually care how far they are from the origin, it's simply that angle from the origin. Um, so we may just put them all on the circumference. Then what we did is we said, well, put our first one right at the North Pole. doesn't matter um, what, if it's here or here to start off with. We can just rotate the pond so it's at the top. Then our second duck would be on the left or the right of this diameter here. We may assume it's on the right by just looking at the, if it's on this side, just looking at the sort of reflection or looking at the pond from behind. And then we saw that the third duck can be anywhere in this bit here along this, this line here, and the probability of that is the length of this line divided by the length of the full circle, the so 2 pi minus theta divided by 2 pi, and that equals 1 minus theta over 2 pi, and then we worked out the expected value of theta was pi over 2, because that's the midpoint of this range, and then just plugged it in, did all the calculations, or the computations, and got the solution was 3 quarters. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want a little extension, you can think of a similar problem, but with four ducks, in a sphere, so a spherical pond. Um, you take four points within a sphere, what is the probability that they all lie within the same half? So you can use a similar argument, it's a little bit more difficult, 
and come up with a similar answer. But I'll leave it there for now. Have a great day. See you soon.